Hey yogis, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra and today I thought I would just take you through my own personal at home practice. So I'm just gonna show you what I normally like to do at home and the poses that I normally do. Um, I tend to do a lot of the same stuff. I focus a lot on hip and hamstring flexibility and a bit on core work. So it's fairly intermediate in level, um, not too challenging. I'm gonna use two blocks so you might wanna have that somewhere close by and we're just gonna start lying down on our backs. Very typical of me, the way I normally start my yoga classes at home is with a knee to chest pose. So keep your left leg extended to the floor and just pull your right knee into your belly. You can either hold on to the back of the hamstrings or the front of the shin. Try to extend and push into your left heel as you draw the right shin in closer. So this is a really simple way to start opening up into the hip flexors and the front of the thigh. Try to soften your shoulders as much as you can. Take a big belly breath here, and then we'll move it over into a twist. So you can cross your right knee over towards the left side of your mat. Right arm extends out to the side, and you can use your left hand to kind of press a little bit on that thigh. So spinal twists are pretty much a must for me. It's probably the one kind of pose that I do every single day whether or not I'm doing a full yoga practice or just doing a couple stretches. I tend to do this pose and thread the needle pretty much every single day, morning and evening. So one way that you can make this a little bit more challenging, my favorite way to do this twist is to straighten your right leg. So if you straighten your right leg, you'll feel this a lot more into the hamstrings and the IT band, and then you can just slide your left hand a little bit further down that right leg, maybe even hold on to the foot as you extend it out. So definitely a deeper variation of this pose. Try to draw your navel into your low back. And you can keep your right knee bent if this is too much. And release the hold of your right foot, bend into the knee, come all the way back up to center, and we'll just switch sides. So you can pull your left knee into your chest, extend your right leg straight out to the floor. Really push into that heel. Squeezing it in. Try to lengthen your spine. Notice if you're curving. Sometimes we collapse in the lower back in a pose like this one. And you can carry it over into a twist. Left knee crosses to the right left arm can extend out to the side just so you can ground that shoulder we always want our collarbones to be facing up this is really a twist from the mid to low back down into the hips so we're looking just for a little mild stretch into the left side of our lower back and it's already a pretty intense pose but if you did want to go a little bit further into this one you can straighten the left leg and slide the hand further down so I pulled my hamstring a little bit on this left side, so I'm not gonna go quite as far. Take deep breaths into the chest. And bend into your left knee, release, roll onto your back. So while we're here, we might as well do some core work. And my favorite abdominal exercises is from the forest yoga style. I've done it a few times on my channel, so you've probably done this with me before. You're going to align your knees directly over the top of your hips as if you're sitting in a chair with your shins parallel to the floor. And really squeeze everything into the midline. Push your lower back down into the floor and that usually makes your knees move forward to your chest. So if that's what happened, keep your lower back glued to the ground and just realign 
your knees over your hips. Just from doing this, you should feel your belly start to really engage. We're gonna interlace the fingers behind the back of the head. So these are super slow yoga bicycles. As you inhale, lift head and shoulders off the mat. Instead of curling towards your thighs, think of lifting up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, you're gonna twist over to the right, lift both shoulder blades off the mat, and extend your left leg straight. So I'm not bringing in my right knee towards me, I'm trying to keep my right knee exactly where it is. Inhale, come to center, and curl tailbone up. Exhale, twist to the left, and reach through your right leg, so about a 45 degree angle from the floor. Inhale, come back to center, lift up higher, pull your navel in. Exhale, twist to the right, reach your left leg straight. Inhale to center, curl up, you should start to feel it. Exhale, twist to the left, extend your right leg. So just one more cycle here, inhale, come to center. Exhale, twist to the right, extend your left leg, try to lift your right shoulder off the ground. Inhale to center, curl tailbone up. Last one, exhale, twist to the left, lift your left shoulder off the mat, straighten your right leg. Inhale, come to center, reach your toes up to the ceiling, reach your fingertips up to the ceiling and pick up everything you can off the floor for five, four, three, two, one. And release, let your hands rest on your belly. Take a few deep breaths here. So a really intense little sequence. That's why I love those abdominal exercises. You really don't need to do very many of them to be able to feel it. So let's just take bridge pose from here. Keep your feet flat on the mat, relax your arms and just lift the hips, low back and mid back off the floor. Squeeze the inner thighs together so you're not rotating open. And just breathe into your belly, trying to stretch out the abdominals. and slowly release down. So I'm just gonna rock up to take a seat and see if you can align and stack, I'll just turn around here, stack your right shin in front of your left one. So you're not over crossing, not doing like a lotus or half lotus type of pose. It's really just one shin in front of the other. Start with the right one first. Reach your fingertips out, lift and lengthen, and then walk your palms forward and you might be up a little bit higher or you might be able to lower down to the ground. We just want to invite the right glute and the right hip to start opening up. Three breaths here. And coming back up. Switch the cross of your legs. So this time you want to have your left shin in front of your right one and same thing. Lift and lengthen up, walk your hands forward, and melt the heart down. So stretching more into the left hip and left glute. And let's unwind. Make your way to your tabletop pose where we'll come into thread the needle. So that's one of those essential poses that I do absolutely every single day. Reach your right arm up to the sky, open up your chest, and then you're gonna reach your right arm underneath you until the shoulder and the ear can drop down to the floor. So there's lots of different ways that you can do this pose. Right now, the, my favorite variation is to just come up onto the left fingertips and push into those left fingertips to twist a little bit deeper. This is really great for the upper back and mid back as well. Plant the left hand down to the mat. Re-extend the right fingertips up to the sky and see if you can open them up a little wider the second time around. Right hand comes down to the floor and we switch sides. Inhale, left arm up. And then exhale, thread it through until you lower to the ground. Come up onto your right fingertips if that feels appropriate and push down to twist a little deeper. So 
So we don't want any tension in the neck here. Just let your head be heavy. Ground your right hand to the floor. Re-extend the left fingertips all the way up to the sky. And set your left hand back down to the mat. Let's step our right foot forward in between the palms, coming into a little low lunge. So right knee is bending over the ankle. Stay up onto your fingertips. Pull your heart forward. Inhale here. And then exhale. Straighten your right leg and fold over. So we'll move in and out of those two poses. Inhale. Low lunge. Lift and look up. Exhale. Half splits. Straighten and fold. Last one, inhale, and exhale, fold it in. Bend into your right knee, plant your palms, three-legged dog. So curl your back toes under, you're gonna reach your right leg all the way up to the sky. Bend your right knee and open up your hip nice and wide. So this is usually where I add a little bit more abdominal work. Straighten your right leg and turn your right hip rotating down so the thigh points down to the mat. As you exhale, tap your right knee to your right shoulder and we're gonna trace a little square. So from your right shoulder, move it over to the left, down to your left wrist, over to your right wrist. One more time, right shoulder, left shoulder, left wrist, right wrist, Step your right foot forward in between your hands, and this is where your blocks can come in handy. Placing them underneath your palms, pretty much the same thing we were doing with our back knee down, but just making it a little bit more challenging. Inhale to a deep lunge, drop your hips, lift your gaze, a little back bend. And then exhale, straighten your front leg and fold for a wider pyramid pose. Twice more here, inhale, deep runner's lunge. Exhale, press into your back heel, fold it down. Last one, inhale. And exhale. Start to bend into your front knee. You can move your blocks off to the side. Pivot your back heel at a 45 degree angle or actually a little bit more parallel to the short edge of your mat, just depends on your hips. Start to walk your hands to the inside, to the left side of your mat. So these are your warrior two legs. Your right knee is still bending generously and pressing open. Left hand stays to the floor. Bring your right hand to the inside of your right thigh and push that knee open a little wider. So one of my favorite stretches gets really deep through the inner thighs. Set your right hand back down to the floor. Spin forward to the top of your mat. Take your vinyasa from here, inhale to plank pose. Exhale, chaturanga to the floor. Inhale, back bend. Exhale, make your way downward facing dog. So this is our first downward dog. Make any little movements and adjustments here that feel good. Stretch out the spine, the arms and the legs. Just here for a breath. And then the knees can come down. Step your left foot forward in between your palms to the top of the mat. So we're coming into our low lunge on the other side. Keep your blocks somewhere close by, but just come up onto your fingertips. So you're pulling the heart forward, dragging the shoulders back. As you exhale, straighten your left leg and fold it down. Twice more like this with your breath. Inhale, low lunge. And exhale half splits. One last time. Exhale to fold it in. Bend into your left knee, ground your hands, three-legged dog, left leg goes all the way up and back. Bend your left knee, open up that hip nice and wide. Try to square off the shoulders, both elbows are straight. Straighten and square your left leg, so let that hip rotate down. And we're going to take that little square shape to engage the abdominals. Pull your left knee in towards your left shoulder. Keep your hips low. And then tap the left knee to the right shoulder. Right wrist. 
left wrist, one more time, left shoulder, right shoulder, right wrist, left wrist, step the foot forward in between your palms, grab a hold of your blocks underneath your hands, deep lunge here, drop the hips, little back bend as you lift the heart up, and then exhale, straighten the front leg, fold it down, twice more. And exhale, fold. Inhale, runner stretch. See if the hips can go a little lower. Exhale, straighten your front leg, fold it in, soften your shoulders. And then bend into your left knee again. You can move your blocks off to the side. Spin your back heel parallel to the shorter edge of your mat and just walk your hands over to the right. Right hand under your right shoulder left hand to the inside of your left thigh and just push that knee open a little bit wider. See if you can sink your hips closer to the ground. Still pushing into your back foot. Release your left hand down, walk forward to the top of the mat. We'll take our flow from here. Inhale to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. So from this down dog, I like to add in a little twist. You can walk your feet a little bit closer towards your hands and bend your knees. You're gonna bring your right hand to the outer edge of your left shin. Bend into your right elbow and see if you can look underneath your left shoulder, maybe straightening the legs. Try to soften your neck. Switching sides, right hand down, bend the knees, catch a hold of the outer edge of your right shin with your left hand, bend the elbow, start to look underneath your right shoulder, and then maybe the legs can press to straighten. Coming back to neutral, come back into your regular down dog, so step the feet back. Let's reach our right leg up to the sky and step your right foot forward between the palms. We're coming up to our high lunge, arms extend up overhead, palms are facing in towards one another. Drop the hips nice and low, we're going to tilt forward, reach your arms back, palms facing down. Keep your front knee bending over that second and third toe. Hands come together at the front of the heart, press up to warrior three. Left leg goes up. So from here into one of my all-time favorite poses, standing pigeon. Coming on up, you're gonna cross your left ankle over the top of your right thigh. Bend into your right knee so your hips can go back as you reach your chest forward. So I'll give you guys a couple options for this one. Where you're at now is option one. Option two is to fold down and come down to the floor. Option three is to take the arm balance, which is usually what I like to do at home. So if you're playing around with flying pigeon, you wanna ground your hands underneath your shoulders, wrap your left toes around your right upper arm, chaturanga the arms, make a little shelf so you can rest your knee and just rock forward, maybe the back foot comes off the mat and it can extend. Bring it back in. Try to come back out same way you came. So if you were down to the mat, bring your hands to your heart. Come all the way up and unwind. Shake it out, step to the top of the mat. We'll take a little vinyasa from here. I like to keep the feet hip width distance apart. Inhale, arms rise. Fold, exhale, halfway lift, chaturanga, hop back, upward dog, and downward dog. Over to the other side, left leg rises, high lunge. So keep your knee directly over your ankle. Try to reach your tailbone down to the floor, draw your navel in, lengthen out through the arms. Let's tilt forward, 
arms back. So nothing really changes in the legs here. It's just the upper body that tilts. Hands together at the front of the heart. Warrior three. Squeezing into the glutes. Into your standing pigeon pose. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Bend into that supporting leg. So this is option one. Already a lot going on. Don't feel like you need to go further. Option two, you can take a forward fold with the hands down to the floor. I'm just going to move back a little bit. Option three, ground the palms, really loop the toes around the upper arm. You need to grip it as if it was like little fingers holding onto the bicep. Bend the elbows, make that little shelf, and you can just rock forward, picking up the back heel and maybe extending. Coming back out the way you came. Hands come together at the heart. We all meet back up. Mountain pose, ready to take our vinyasa. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And let's set our knees down to the mat. Take a wide like a child's pose. Big toes together, knees apart. Hips to your heels and lower down. So use this as an opportunity to slow down your heart rate by lengthening your breath. So at home, I usually like to work my way up to a peak pose. For this class, what we just did, the peak pose for me was definitely flying pigeon, the arm balancing pose. And then after that peak pose, it's time to start unwinding and cooling down. So we, make, we go into poses that are lower to the floor and that are less about strength, a little bit more about stretch. Let's walk the hands back in. So come to take a seat. You can extend your left leg out to the side, right heel in towards the inner groin. So you're trying to widen the legs further away from each other. We'll come into a side bend first. So left hand can go down the left leg, inhale, right arm up, and then exhale, move over to the side. So we're not folding to the leg. Instead, try to draw that right shoulder back. So this little bit, this little sequence that we're doing here is one that I also do pretty much every day. So starting with a little seated side bend and then going into baby wild thing. Bring your right hand back behind you. Swing your left arm forward and back. Push into the hips. Lift up. Uh, release, hips to the floor, and now this time you're going to reach your right hand over to the outer edge of your left foot, and this time fold in towards your shin. And unwind, come up, let's switch sides, bend your left knee, extend your right leg out. Try to widen the knees. Begin with your side bend first, so left arm up, right hand down the leg, exhale, tilt over. And you can soften your neck here, let your head be heavy. Trying to rotate the chest up.
into your baby wild thing, left hand down, right arm goes up and over, push into the legs, lift the pelvis up. Into your forward fold, set the hips down, bring your left hand to the outer edge of your right foot and fold in. unwind and let's make our way down onto our backs we're going to come into reclined pigeon pose I pretty much always finish my classes at home with this pose just a great way to release the glutes and the hips so you can cross your right ankle over the top of your left knee flex that foot and press the knee away from you either holding here or reaching through with your arms and pulling the left knee in a little bit closer So head and shoulders are down to the floor. Give that leg one last little squeeze. And before we do the other side, just release and cross your right thigh over your left one. You can move your hips a few inches to the right before letting both knees drop over to the left, reaching the arms out, taking a little twist. And use your abdominals to lift the knees back up, uncross your legs. Recline pigeon on the second side, cross your left ankle over the top of your right knee with that foot flexed. And you can reach through with your arms to pull that thigh in a little closer. Breathe deeply and give that leg a little squeeze. Carefully set your right foot back down, cross your left thigh over your right one and you can move your hips a little bit over to the left before dropping your knees to the right and extending the arms. Engage your belly, unwrap the legs, and we'll make our way to Shavasana, our final resting pose. So even in a home practice, I never ever skip Shavasana. This is probably the most important pose you can do throughout your practice. It really helps you integrate all of the work that you've done, even if it's just 30 seconds or a minute. I'm trying to make a habit of ending each practice like this, relaxing everything and just observing, noticing what feels different now, what has changed and shifted as a result of your practice today.
slowly wake back up by breathing a little deeper. Wiggle fingers and toes, turn the head side to side. And you can take a great big stretch, reaching your arms up. And we'll turn to one side. Come on up to take a seat. So always finishing my practice just by grounding, sitting up nice and tall. And hands can rest on the knees or join together at the front of the heart. We'll close with the chant of Om one time, inhaling to chant, breathe in. Oh. Namaste. Thank you, yogis, for doing this practice with me. I got a lot of questions recently of people asking me what my home practice was like, so I figured I would just make a little video and show you. I would love to know what you think, and if you're new to this channel, please do subscribe. I put out new classes every single Thursday. Thanks again. Have a great day.